few turning point. You know, we are humbled, Deb and I, to be here in what God has called us to do, called me to do. And I couldn't be more honored and humbled to be able to be the under shepherd for this precious congregation. I just want y'all to just give yourselves a hand this morning for being who you are, being faithful. Each of you know who you are, what you contribute to this house, because pastoring would not be able to be effective without effective and faithful people. So give yourselves a hand, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Um, before I get into this word, I just want to, you know, I'm still touched by the children's presentation last week. And I'm so humbled seeing the Aaron Sola family here. Clyde, Deborah, you guys do an awesome job and it manifests with the kids. <laughs> young men, young women, you all are awesome. I almost didn't preach last week with the word that y'all gave. So thank you so much. Amen? Amen. All right. Oh, man. I am not going to be doing much uh, preaching, more of an exhortation this morning. Amen? I don't want to keep everyone too long. I know people still got Christmas shopping and all that to do. If you're anything like me, you ain't got it done yet. I'm like last minute Larry. Yeah, so... Uh, but just as important is, is the word, amen? So I'm a, um, we, before we get to the word, I'm going to just ask the Holy Spirit to just fill us to overflowing right now with anticipation for what you're going to do. I heard Elder Ed praying this morning. He didn't even know what the word was going to be this morning. But what he didn't realize, he already spoke what was going to talk about our charge at the end of the short uh, annotation or word. If you, you know, I'm not going to get too deep. deep. What I'm going to be saying has so much material could come out of that, but I just want to focus on these things. So, Father, I just give you glory, honor, and praise this morning. I stand in your presence, humbled, O oh God to be chosen to be the mouthpiece for your word as it goes forth. May it touch your people, Lord God, internally. Fill us from the inside out, O oh God. And Lord, that as we hear this word, that we apply it to our lives and our memory for what time it is, O oh God. Let us be like the children of Issachar, which who knew what time it was and be able to execute in kind, O oh God. So Lord, thank you that I could decrease this morning and your word will increase. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your direction. And thank you for just being who you are in our lives. We give you glory, honor, and praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Turn with me in your Bibles. You could just follow along with me. I'm um, read this. this is a... Uh, it's a short Christmas message, Remembering Jesus Christ. That's what the title is going to be, a Christmas message, Remembering Jesus the Christ. Going to Luke chapter 2, verse 4 through 20. When you get it, say amen. All right. And I know sometimes my accent get ahead of me. I may read a little fast. I'm going to try to slow down. So uh, I will read and I may ask for specific readings together. Okay. Starting with verse 4. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So 
it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly house praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. <clears throat> so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard of it marveled at those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Let's read verse 20 again together. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told to them. God bless the reading of his word. Now, in a lot of liturgical circles, you know, we read the account of Jesus' birth during Christmas time. People do it out of tradition. Amen? And the accounts of his birth is found in Matthew and in Dr. Luke's account. And like I say, I'm not going to go into so much rich stuff come out of that story, but I just wanted to give you some short nuggets today and an application to the end for us to take on. Amen? Amen. Okay. I didn't charge my tablet last night, so please forgive me. Starting to get accustomed to that thing now. Hmm. So we often hear wise men say those who are not able to remember the lessons of history are certainly doomed to repeat it. Anybody heard that before? Yeah. We are bound to repeat those mistakes of the past. Yet, yet, with a story we just read. Many find it hard to mine, like a gold mine, to mine the richness of what was presented in verse 4 through 20. So, we as a people, especially in America, and especially in these times now, we tend to get focused on our current reality which we know is this COVID and the, and the uh, vaccinations and all those good stuff. Those are events that are dominating our current reality. However, there's some nuggets that we have read over and over in the word of God that we do not mind. Amen? Amen. Just in crisis coming alone, oh, my goodness, you, we, we could change the world with those examples in there. 
unfortunately we don't. So what I want to do this morning, I want to give you eight guidelines in helping us remember all that we are, all that we have, and will inherit through the birth of the Christ child. Is that okay? So the first one is, remember that Jesus existed before the beginning of time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Taken from John 1.1. 1, 1. Christ's pre-existence gives him the right to do whatever he wants with everyone. Amen? Jesus was always in heaven indicating that he is the supreme originator of everything good. You could look in John 3, 13. For the matter of fact, I'm going to make these scriptures available to everybody. Also, under that first reminder, Jesus had glory with the Father before the world was created. In John 17, 5, the no one deserves greater glory, honor, or adoration than Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Second thing, remember... Christ's birth was foretold by great men of God and the angel Gabriel. Isaiah prophesied of Christ's birth in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He should be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Amen? The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Can't leave that out. He's a lived everlasting to everlasting. Amen? Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Mo Moses even prophesied about it, and it's a little nugget that we miss sometime in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. When he talked about the prophet that God is going to raise up, and you will hear him. Remember what God said, and the Mount of Transfiguration, right? This is my beloved son. Hear him. And the angel Gabriel, as we know, that was more of an announcement, more than a prophecy, but it was prophesied because it was before it happened. Amen? When Gabriel show up, things happen. Amen? Amen. And he prophesied the birth of Christ. So it was foretold by great men and great angel. So I'm going somewhere with all of this, okay? Remember, huh, and this is where we in our fleshly mode of living have an issue with. Christ was born in humble circumstances. He was born in a lonely stable because there was no place for him in the local inn. Now, do you think God could have been, bam, and he's in the inn? But no, that was not what God wanted. He wanted him to come into this world the means that he came into. That's kind of a lesson for us on humility, isn't it? Mm. And it's a lesson we miss over and over and over and one that we need to embrace. But... I ain't getting into preaching. That's another time. He was laid in a manger where animals fed. He became poor so that we, through his poverty, might become rich. Y'all tracking with me? Remember, number four, Christ's compassion towards sinful mankind. See, so he came to earth during a time of great turmoil to rescue all people from death, destruction, and hell. He came to earth because of his love for the whole world. That's what he said in John 3, 16, for God, soul of the world. Amen? Christ had compassion on the multitudes because he rightly saw them as sheep without a shepherd as indicated in Matthew 9, 36 through 38. Number five. 
Remember Christ's entrance to the world came through a believing virgin. God chose to use Mary, a humble servant, who was willing to be used of God in whatever way he chose. Often time when God put us on assignment that we want to decide how we want to do it. Mm. Well. God chose to use Joseph as the protecting father because he knew Joseph would not desert Mary in her time of need despite the accusations that came from the community. The Bible says Joseph was a just man. He's not going to put her out on blast. He understood who he was in the scheme of things. How many people, and no hands, but just think about it. You have a wife in those days where, when you say betrothed, it was set up a pre-arranged marriage, chase for you, but all of a sudden, she ends up pregnant. First thing you wonder what everybody's going to say. What everybody's going to do. It didn't matter. This was God ordained. Amen? Amen. Hmm. God chose to use. Who I like this. The wrath of Herod. To work a miracle. The Lord often used the wrath of men. To bring himself. Greater praise. Let's ponder that for a minute. Ponder that for a minute. There was Herod, but there was different occurrences. Not just through scripture, but even to the now and through history. Where we wonder, why him? We don't question God's plan, do we? No, we don't. Number six. Remember that Christ came into the world during some of history's darkest hours. He came into a world dominated by polytheistic and vile Roman rule. He came to a people who rejected him because he posed a threat to the pharisaical religious leaders of the day. It's Pharisees and Sadducees and all them that look to want to not just dishonor, but take down and disrupt what God is doing. Many of us know you can't disrupt God's plans, especially when you put them in motion. Mm. We may try to do it, but God don't change. He changes not. Amen? Yeah. And Christ came to his own and they received him not because he did not live up to their expectations. I could Boy, I said, whoo, I could go some places with that. Amen? One of the things that comes to mind is when they challenge them about performing miracles and healings on Sundays. Remember that? On the Sabbath day. And once he challenged them what they had to do, back down. Mm. He came to a people who rejected him because he posed a threat to them. Mm -mm -mm. Number seven. And I want to come back to number seven to the end of this short exhortation. Remember Christ's priorities for coming into the world. Remember Christ's priorities for coming into the world. He came into the world to provide forgiveness for sinners who had asked Christ to be their savior. Amen? He came into this world to rescue people and groups from the self-destruction of sin. Christ came into the world to serve and not to be served and to give himself as a ransom for many. Christ came into this world to set an example for reaching the whole world through his great commission of Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go into all the world and make disciples of all people and all groups. Was that a priority or what? What are we doing right now to make that happen? Oh. Remembers Christ's concern for the microscopic as well as the macroscopic issues of life. 
The little things, and even the tiny things that we think are embedded. He's concerned about that. He's, inser- he's concerned for the very essence of your being. He balances concerns for little things in the light of his bigger perspective and purposes. He never lost sight of forests from the trees. Christ never gave in to the daily burdens and discouragements that he encountered. He used the little things to help people prove their faithfulness in order to determine who could be trusted with greater responsibilities. Hmm. So, keep in mind, remember those eight things. But I'm going to go back as I get ready to close here and briefly recap Remembrance 7. See, in the season we're in, You know, we, we are all caught up in lavish gift giving, spending money we don't have, doing all kinds of things, which is good. It's a good to give. But you got to keep it in the right perspective. What do you think is the greatest and most life changing gift of all? The most life-changing and greatest gift of all is the gift of eternal life. When was the last time we sat down with somebody and led them to Christ? See, we're talking about gift giving and Christmas and all the stuff we're giving. We should be witnessing as well as giving. Let it not be so, folks. Christ's priorities should be our priorities. You agree? So let this be the day that a new resolve takes place in our collective lives. Not just material gifts, but the gift of Christ as well. And not just this time of year, but year round. See, spiritual sound and words are easily heard and easily forgotten. So I want to give you something specific. Something that will be life-changing and life-altering as I close. Y'all ready for it? Take this in, not just as you're hearing just another word. But take this as a challenge and a charge to you for this Christmas season and beyond. I want you to ask God to lay on your heart one person, one person who needs to hear the good news of Jesus this week. Mm. And ask him for an opportunity to show the love of God to that person by telling them how they could know the gift on their own. How they could know that gift that our God for his love providing us a means to everlasting life. And if you don't feel like you're able to tell them how to know Christ, then invite them to church. Or invite them to our website, tpcglobal.org. Just do something to introduce them to Christ. I promise you, that's the best gift that you could offer somebody is for them to feel what you feel, know what you know, experience what you experience, and live as you live. Amen. Amen. 
When you do that, you're going to experience something of the joy the shepherds found in finding Christ and telling him others about it in Luke 2, 18 like we read today. You remember as we read that passage, there was a lot said about what the shepherds did. Well, guess what we are charged to do? The same thing. We get the good news. We come in here Sunday after Sunday or ever study after study, whatever word we hear on TV, and we get good news downloaded to us, but it does nothing for the world if it's kept within ourselves. Come on. Amen. We got to get after this thing. And we don't need to wait for the new year to start evangelizing and letting people know the good news of the Christ. Jesus the Christ. How he came to this earth and gave us this opportunity to have life and have it more abundantly and be able to be in a country where we are celebrating his birth without any kind of persecution. I challenge you today to not just take that on but get before the Lord and pray about it. In your prayer time, your quiet time. I promise you, the exuberance you feel when you release that and you see that change in that person because of Christmas, you're going to experience joy, unspeakable joy. I love y'all, Turning Point Church. Like I told you, just want to give you a source of encouragement for the season. Make sure that we keep everything Christ-centered because Jesus is the reason for the season. Let it not just be a slogan, folks. Let it be our way of life. We should be a walking poster board for Christ. And you know how you do it? By your love. God bless you. I love you all. Have a very Merry Christmas. And have a prosperous 2021. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now as I close. I just want to pray. For us and beyond. Father we just thank you. For this short exhortation. To understand the legacy. In which we have inherited. The legacy. Which gives us the right to say Abba, Daddy. The legacy in which we walk and move now and have the ability to speak into the lives of others. Father, we thank you so much. We say thank you. We can't say thank you enough for providing the means to everlasting life. We can't say thank you enough for redeeming us unto yourself. You loved us so much, Lord, you sent yourself down, oh God, to the miraculous birth of the Christ child. Into this world to redeem us from our sins. Lord, let this day not go by if we have any sin of commission or omission in thought, word, or deed that will hinder our movement and our purpose and movement in our prayers today. We as a body of believers, we come before you and we release that unto you. We repent now, Holy Father. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, O oh God. Continue to cultivate us, O oh God. Place others in our path, O oh God. So they could just take one look at us. We don't have to read one scripture, but they could take one look and feel the love that coming off of us to approach us and give us the words to say to bring them into the kingdom, O oh God. Father, we honor you today. We honor this time of the year because we fully recognize what time it is. I lift up 
this body of believers to you today, O oh God. Who dwell and live in agape and phileo love. This congregation is such a loving congregation. We thank you, Lord God, for even through the storms and the valleys we may go through, we still exude love because we trust in you and you are love. So, Father, I just thank you for them. Thank you that you're going to grant, O oh God, the desires of their heart in this season as they maintain, O oh God, your desire in their hearts. Thank you for protecting them. They're going out. They're coming in, O oh God. Even those who are on the road right now, coming back into town, going out of town, Lord God, grant them traveling mercies as they go, Holy Father. May you continue, Holy Spirit, to stir them, O oh God. Stir them for a deeper understanding of you. And a deeper understanding of each individual purpose as we go through this season and into the new year. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you that who are you have been to us. We thank you that you have been sustaining our church, oh God. Lord, even in this season where many churches and ministries fall, we are still here, and it's by your grace and your mercy, oh God. Thank you for opening up the doors of increase. Not just in stuff, but in people, oh God. An increase from within, Lord, that our, 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 our spirit man could grow even more immensely for deeper meaning of you, oh God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we could cast our cares on you. Because your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Be glorified now in this Christmas season and this time of celebration when we not ever forget who you are in us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with me, please? As we dismiss today, if you don't remember what the challenge was, you could go back and review it, but that challenge is serious. So we'll just think of one person. Amen? Did everybody hear that? Amen. Say one person. Let's hear it again. One person. One person. Amen. It could be more, but let's start off with one. We start off with and let it grow from there. And tell them the good news of Christ and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May our God the sovereign God of the universe who knows all things, sees all things and sustains us, lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace in this season of peace, good tidings and joy. I leave this with you this week and all who is in agreement with that say Amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you and see you around camp. I have a pair of quick.